Hello everyone, my name is Tom, not Zach, and welcome to MC Direct, um, where we let you know what is happening and what is going to happen, and what has happened in the past week. We let you know all of the happenings. On the personal channels this week, Zach and Dewey are both kind of low-key so far. Dewey is in Germany, but does have some Guild Wars 2 footage, he's just withholding it from us. Uh, because he is evil. Ray is still playing along, and Ray plays Minecraft and The Amazing Spider-Man. His walkthrough is amazing, I'm just gonna come right out and say it. There, what, Zach? I'll double down. On my channel, I am doing a little bit of Spelunky and a little bit of Skyrim. In Skyrim, I'm just getting started on. I am having some technical issues with the start of that walkthrough, but that's okay. We'll get through that eventually. And Guild Wars 2, uh, from the beta weekend event. I just got through, like, the Silvari starting zones, like, up until about level 10 or so. Uh, so, yeah, that's what's going on on my channel. Coming up for the Media Cows, we don't have Dewey for the next week, two weeks, I think, actually, even. So that leaves us with three people, and, you know, forecast is our big thing, but we are willing to use that when we don't have all four of us, necessarily. So we are going to do a forecast with three people playing the game Trine, uh, which I'm looking forward to. It looks like a fantastic game. It's a side-scroller. Yeah, it's got some awesome co-op gameplay. I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I have not tried it out yet. And for the last thing that we usually do for MC Direct, uh, come a little bit closer here. All right. Audience, this is, this is important. This is one of the keys to a show with audience participation, is that the audience must participate. We got very few questions this last week um, on our other MC Direct video, so uh, because of that I don't have a question to answer. Um, so instead, I'm just going to wax poetic about the impact that gaming has had on my life. So I actually was young enough that I don't remember this, but the first time that I held a controller in my hand, it was an NES controller, and it was Super Mario Brothers, the original Super Mario Brothers, and apparently I absolutely hated it. I was just like, I was bad at it. That game, to be fair, is actually very punishing in terms of like, well, you die three times and then you're dead because they had to stretch the game's difficulty in order to make it take longer to beat the game. But apparently I was, I mean, I was very young and, and I was frustrated by the game and I was like, why would anyone ever, ever do this? So, I, I mean, that's what I hear from my mom is that I hated video games the first time that I played them, but... That is not what I remember. What I remember is, like, watching my my brother, my older brother, I've got an older brother, his name's Sam, he's 10 years older than me, watching him play a lot of video games, like the original Zelda, and and even Zelda 2, the, uh, the really, really difficult sequel that had, like, side-scroller portions in it, where you, like, you'd fight monsters in a side-scrolling fashion, which was kind of odd. Watching him play and enjoying just watching him play, and then later, eventually, once I started playing myself, eagerly awaiting my turn and taking turns playing through games with my brother. It's one of the more fond memories in my life. But the, the first game that I think really had a huge impact on me personally, like beyond just, you know, like developing who I am. Games and the idea of heroes and like they've, they've been formative for my values, definitely, because, you know... You see a whole bunch of people that you're supposed to think are good doing things that you're supposed to think are good, and that... That's a good way to turn someone into a good person. Video games are great in that respect. But the biggest impact that video games actually had were, when I was young, I was not actually, like, I, I, I've done well in school for most of my life, but in, like, kindergarten and first grade, where you learn how to read, they were considering holding me back, actually, because I was not motivated to learn how to read for some odd reason. Like, my mom did everything that she could. She, like, read to me before sleep and everything. But it was eventually the game Final Fantasy II, that I would play it with my mom, and she would sit next to me and, like, read the, the dialogue from the characters, and so I could only play this game that I really, like, had gotten hooked on when my mom was there to, to read along with me. And, and she's a single mother, she's got other things to do than read the dialogue from a video game with me, so that's not all the time, right? And that actually ended up being the big impetus that caused me to want to learn how to read. So video games are actually huge for myself at a younger age. Back then, everyone figured that video games were for kids, and that eventually kids would grow out of playing games. And I don't even know if that's really an idea that people have anymore. I think that idea is probably pretty much dead. Nowadays, the demographic for video games hugely goes up to like 35. 
with massive, massive portions of the population. But back then, people thought that I would, you know, grow out of playing video games. And I, I think actually, maybe video games grew into something that people keep playing, and maybe that was just a stupid idea that people had back then, that they were four kids. I don't know that they ever necessarily were. I think Final Fantasy II actually had some, like, good themes. It was, you know, it had a lot of the attributes of a great novel, and people don't say that you grow out of great novels. So all throughout my schooling years, um, throughout junior high and high school, video games were really my hobby. That's, they've always been my biggest hobby, you know, I was definitely one of those kids that some parents would just tell to go outside and get some fresh air constantly all day every day until I finally started just doing it on my own but my mom you know understood that there was value in interactive storytelling basically which is essentially what video games are but I mean throughout junior high and high school they were essentially mostly a single player affair for me it was a way for me to you know escape reality a little bit not that my reality was particularly bad or anything but when i didn't want to be thinking about schoolwork or you know my family or whatever i would be playing video games that's what i would do where video games kind of got important again for me aside from just being a hobby aside from just something to fill time and escapism was when i left for grad school actually so I was born and raised in Minnesota, in Stillwater. I went to McAllister College for undergraduate, and for grad school, I moved to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, which, if you kept track of that story, that's the first time that I had left Minnesota. That's the first time that I was more than 30 minutes from the friends and family that I had spent my entire life with, right? Video games were how I kept in touch with my friends. Since when you go to chemistry grad school, you pretty much only make friends with other chemistry graduate students, that ends up being a, a fairly limited crowd, so it's definitely happy to have that, you know, recurring activity stuff to do. League of Legends was huge in that respect. StarCraft II, huge in that respect as well. Um, those are two games that I will forever love because they helped me get through what was really a, a tough time in my life. Aside from moving away from my friends and family, also Corey, my current girlfriend right now, Corey was still living in Minnesota for the first year of my graduate school. And after that, she started going to graduate school in Virginia. And so I was also very much so distant from her. And... The fact that I was already interacting with a lot of my friends from back home using video games, you know, it really kind of made it more of a natural thing to keep that long-term relationship going, because I was already keeping other long-term relationships going, and, I mean, the fact that I'm now living here on the other side of the country from all of my friends and family except for Corey, really, that should tell you that I value that decision very highly. On top of all those things, I also think that video games have helped me become a good thinker. I think that they've allowed me to effectively solve problems because I've solved a lot of problems before. Um, if you sit around and you read, or way, way worse than that, you watch TV, um, yeah, you'll still become more cultured, you'll still learn all of these stories, and, you know, you'll probably have some values instilled in you by that. But you will not learn how to solve problems. I think anyone that's played through the Water Temple in Ocarina of Time will tell you that you either need to cheat and use a guide, or you do need to actually think through how to work that out. And so having this hobby that sort of forced me to think all the time, I think has been a big part of why I've been, you know, successful in school. So yeah, I think that'll just about do it for this episode of MC Direct. Please leave a question below or a comment, and please like if you guys have enjoyed this copy of MC Direct. Look forward to trying over this week, and check out my channel if you want to see some Spelunky, some Skyrim, or some Guild Wars 2. And check out Ray's channel if you want some Spider-Man or some Minecraft. But above all else, keep gaming.